Hi everyone, it's Pastor Bill Wendell. Welcome to our video. This video is a continuation of our series of devotionals on Paul's letters to the Thessalonians. Specifically, we're looking at week four, day three of Seabed's daily weekly devotional on Paul's letters to the Thessalonians by Dr. Matt O'Reilly. Dr. O'Reilly has day three's theme as holiness means abounding love. The scripture that goes along with today is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 9 through 12. This is what the text says. Now, about your love for one another, we don't need to write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love each other. And in fact, you do love all of God's family throughout Macedonia. Yet we urge you, brothers and sisters, to do so more and more and make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. You should mind your own business and work with your hands, just as we told you, so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders and so that you will not be dependent on anyone. The key observation for today is that holiness is overflowing love, not legalistic rule following. The discussion question is, what do you think of when you hear the word holy? Rules to be obeyed, a performance to be maintained? How does the term holy love challenge and transform your understanding of holiness? Years ago, there was a country music song called Too Much Fun. Part of it goes like this, too much fun? What's that mean? It's like too much money? There's no such thing. It's like a girl too pretty with too much class, being too lucky, or a car too fast. I think Paul would say, actually, what you cannot have too much of is love. In today's reading, Paul commends the Thessalonians for their love. In fact, he wrote, writes that he knows that they love each other and all of God's people throughout Macedonia. However, Paul continues writing by saying, we urge you, brothers and sisters, to do so more and more. In my sermon this Sunday, I said that our culture has a very distorted view of love. Too often, it is a thinly veiled code for self-gratification. Earlier in chapter 4, Paul tells the Thessalonians that they should refrain from sexual immorality. Dr. O'Reilly connects restraint with love by writing this, If they abound in love, they won't see other people as objects to be used, not least with regard to sex. Instead, they'll treat each other with dignity, respect, and honor. They'll embody the character of Jesus to one another. They'll be holy. Here we see that love constrains even more than it is permissive. My love for my wife calls me to deny my desire for self-gratification. Timothy Keller is a pastor in New York City, and he said that when Christians are having sex, what they're really doing is they're renewing their wedding vows. They're saying with their bodies the vows that they've already committed to. They're saying, I will cherish you. I will honor you. I am committed to you. When it's all about self-gratification and we use other people as objects, it's not really love. This applies in all areas of life. Think about our friends, family, coworkers, and neighbors. Do we love them? only for what they can do for us, or do we love them for their own sake? This is part of the reason Paul links love with working hard and not being a burden to others. Specifically, he told the Thessalonians to make it their ambition to lead a quiet life. That meant minding their own business and working with their hands so that their daily lives would win the respect of outsiders, and so they wouldn't have to be dependent on anybody. When thinking about holy love, the question we ask ourselves is, am I a burden lifter or a burden giver? I want to be very clear, this of course does not mean that God doesn't want us to ask for help when we need it. Of course God does want us to do that, but really it's a matter of the heart. To be holy is to reflect God's heart. God does not love us for what we can do for him. He loves us for our own sake, and he wants us to love others the same way. Please pray with me. Lord, Send your holy love to us so that we can pour it out into other people's lives. We pray these things in Jesus' name by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope everyone is doing well. Please know that we're continuing to pray 
for everyone as we begin to move in, at least here in Ohio, we're moving into the, the phases of reopening. We're not sure still what's going to happen in the future. Uh, please keep up to, please know that we're updating things in terms of worship and reopening the building. Uh, keep an eye out for that. I hope everyone is having a blessed day.